This is the wave. I think this suit has seen better days. Freefly systems are probably most well known. I have to get rid of this place, it's so hot. Freefly systems is a company probably best known for their drones and professional gimbals. And I have a Freefly Movi Pro myself that I use if I want to fly heavy cameras on a gimbal. Last weekend I had a chance to review the first Freefly Wave unit for Switzerland and I had it for three days. The body is fairly compact and lightweight, coming in at only 716 grams. The sensor is a Super 35mm global electronic shutter with a Sony E-mount. That E-mount is fully manual, so you have to keep this in mind that you can only use fully manual lenses with this camera. The sensor's native resolution is 4096 by 3072 pixels. However, depending on your frame rate, the aspect ratio and the resolution will change and adapt accordingly. If you're interested in the detailed specs for this camera, there's a link in the description. To say that the controls of this camera are minimalistic is probably an understatement. You literally have three buttons, on off, record and a menu button where you can toggle through the options and then select it by pressing it. The user interface of this camera is very minimalistic as well. You can only adjust the very basics like shutter speed, frame rate, white balance and the color and that's pretty much about it. However, there's one thing that's really bugging me currently and I hope they'll fix this in a future firmware update. That is, if you turn the camera on and off, all your settings that you did before, they're gone and it's basically back to standard. Now Freefly are advertising this camera, amongst other things, to be a crash camera. I'm really wondering what time will tell how the exposed fan in the back will hold up to these promises. When it comes to powering options, you can run the Wave via the AC cable or the built-in camera battery. The built-in camera battery doesn't really have a long run time, however they allow you to use a DTAP cable where you can connect to a V-mount style of battery for literally pretty much infinite running time. Now let's come to the part that is probably most interesting, the image quality and the frame rate options. In 4K 17x9, that will be 4096 by 2176 pixels, you can go up to 422 frames per second. I found the sweet spot in 4K to be at 4096 by 1920 pixels, where we're able to shoot a whopping 477 frames per second. So as long as you stick with 4K resolution, you could say this camera has a pretty decent output. However, things change a bit when we get to 2K. You can go up to 1440 frames per second in 2K. However, to be very honest with you, I don't consider this footage to be usable, especially for professional applications. Freefly Systems is aware of that and they are actually very honest about it at their Gitbook page. Speaking of image quality in general, the dynamic range of the Freefly Wave is very limited. Freefly systems, they claim to have 10 up to 11 stops, but I think this is a very enthusiastic measurement. I don't have a lab here to precisely test the actual dynamic range of the wave, but clearly when you look at the footage, you can see that this is a place where the camera falls short. And this is actually something that already came to my mind when I saw the first footage trailer of Freefly back then when the wave was announced. So if you're in a situation where you actually have a sufficient amount of light and dynamic range, the color is pretty decent straight out of camera. I actually got a fair bit of real world use out of this camera. I tested it in controlled lighting environment, in a studio and also outdoors. I would say in controlled lighting situation and in a studio, this camera is very capable. However, outdoors, it's a huge challenge combating the lack of dynamic range. In order to edit the footage, let's say in Premiere, you first have to convert it through Freefly's own converting software called Freefly Wave and it's currently in beta. The beta status has its reasons because the Mac version that I have tested is kind of unstable at times and has a tendency of crashing, especially when you convert longer files. 
It's also a very time-consuming process given that the software manages, in my case, to render 3 or 4 frames per second when you have 4K footage. And another thing that I really hope that they fix is that they implement batch converting because currently you have to convert file by file and pretty much just wait for it to be done. There's two things about this camera that I currently don't like. Problem number one is the form factor. This camera is super asymmetric and yeah, it's kind of slim, but I think they sacrificed a lot for this slimness. And maybe you think, oh, they decided for this form factor because you know it's like this DSLM, DSLR style where you have a grip on the side. The HDMI ports that you need for an external monitor is exactly where you would have your hand if you were to grip it handheld. And I don't understand the logic behind that. And then of course, another thing I don't like is the dynamic range. You build a camera that screams, let's go outside, take me on a hike, I want to be used handheld because at 477 frames, who cares about gimbals? But then if you're outdoors, this dynamic range is barely usable sometimes. However, there is a lot of things to like and a few things to even love about this camera. First and foremost, it is coming from Freefly Systems, that is the camera company that pretty much made gimbals mainstream. For me, the first gimbal that I've ever used was, I think, the Movi M5. And I still remember the setup process was quite difficult to balance it, to fine-tune the motors, etc, etc. And this is nothing compared to the convenience you have to today's Movi Pro. I have a lot of faith in Freefly Systems to fine-tune this product to its full capability and also to come up maybe with a version 2 that is going to be the version everybody wants and that is going to be what the camera should have been to begin with. I really like the general idea of this camera existing. Because if you look at the high-speed camera market or the slow-motion camera market, there are very limited options at this price point. I like what Freefly Systems are doing. They are disrupting the market yet again. Finally, what I love about this camera is if everything falls into place, the footage looks absolutely stunning. If you like this video, it would mean a lot to me if you left a like, subscription or a comment below. So until then, keep creating and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cut!